Welcome to the Lansing Connection. I'm Senator Nancy Cassis, and as you know, I represent the citizens of the 15th District in Western Oakland County. And every few weeks, we try to come to you and bring to you a very special guest who has interest not only in Michigan, but today, even more importantly, throughout the United States and internationally. Our very special guest I'm honored to introduce to you is a man who comes to us from New Hampshire. But as I have just learned, he and I both have roots on Long Island, where I was born and raised and where he was as well. If you don't know this name, I'm sure it will resonate after our show today for many, many months in all of your minds and hopefully voices. Dean Kamen, welcome to the Lansing Connection. It's great to be here. Thank you. Thank you, Dean. I want to share with our audience just your, a little bit of your background. You are certainly one of the most prominent entrepreneurs, innovators, inventors of this century and the last. And I say that clearly because I know your resume. You uh, specifically hold, I think, more than 400 patents. That's absolutely incredible. And in many ways, you have focused on the healthcare industry and making life better for people who have certain disabilities or problems. But of course, my audience probably knows you best for the segue. Uh, certainly, we remember seeing you on NBC scooting that around, I think, with Matt Lauer. Yes. <laughs> that was wonderful. But we're not going to focus on just that today. We're going to focus why you're here with us in Lansing, Michigan, to really, uh, if I will, promote FIRST Robotics. You are the founder of FIRST, which stands for? For Inspiration and Recognition of Science and Technology. I think it's important to note a word that's not in the name of this not-for-profit, FIRST. And the word that's not in there is education. And the reason I say that is, and I'm hoping that people in the government here as well as your citizens understand, we believe the most unique thing about FIRST is while it's all about kids in schools, getting them to stay in schools, getting them to leverage the incredible amounts of resources and money we all as citizens put into our schools, we as an organization don't believe that we or our corporate sponsors uh, should be educating kids. That's what the schools do. That's what the mm -hmm. teachers do. Mm -hmm. But we believe there is a fundamental cultural change that happened in this country uh, over the last few decades by which we, the richest country in the world, the most innovative country in the world, kind of lost our edge. And the average kid on the street when we started first, uh, nearly 20 years ago, could tell you the name of lots of living famous football players, basketball players, rock stars. And we realized that if you live in a free culture where you get what you celebrate, this country in the media age has come to celebrate and give role models to kids from only two places, the world of sports and the world of entertainment. Those are not the places that are going to sustain our quality of life, our standard of living, our security as a country, our leadership in the world, to really create the jobs of the future, to really create the careers and excitement and opportunity of the future, to create the cures for diseases, the energy policy that gives us what we need without destroying our environment. You name the real problem, and I will tell you its solution lies in the next generation of great technology. And we realize that if our kids don't start getting passionate again about science and technology, as they were when we led the world almost unrivaled, you know, from the days of Thomas Edison to Orbe, Orville and Wilbur Wright. You know, if, if this country doesn't get back to its basics of being the most entrepreneurial, the most innovative country, we're going to lose and maybe never recover that unique role in the world. And so we formed a not-for-profit first. If kids love sports, if we're as a culture now obsessed with sports, why not make a sport that encompasses science, technology, mathematics, learning. And so the word first, you know, nobody ever chants running around any f sports 
uh, stadium I know saying, I want to be second. Exactly. So the name first itself was fun, but it was for inspiration, not education. Let the teachers do that. We'll inspire these kids. For inspiration and recognition of science and technology was put together so that we could create a venue in a sports setting by which kids could see scientists and engineers in the same exciting uh, format as they see the NBA and the NFL. The problem, of course, and this is where you come in, the problem, of course, is where do you get the Shaquille O'Neal to put in front of these kids? Where do you get a young, enthusiastic engineer or scientist to be a role model, to be somebody that these kids can meet and then say, wow, this is, I want to be like that? Well, those aren't other little kids. If you're trying to inspire kids to do math and science by letting them see what other little kids do, it's called a science fair. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't compete right. with letting them watch the NBA. Kids don't play t-ball because they saw other kids playing t-ball. They play t-ball because they just saw the World Series and they imagine and they aspire to be like this. So 17 years ago, I convinced 17, no, 20, about 23 companies to each adopt a local school somewhere in the country and let their young scientists and engineers, particularly their women and minority scientists and right. engineers, work with these right. kids. Because as you know, very, as bad as it is in this country trying to get kids into math and science, once you say, how about minorities? How about women in math and science? They're not even visible. So we convinced 20 some odd companies in 1992 to go adopt a local school hopefully a school where the kids had never met a scientist or a mathematician or a real engineer or inventor, and work with them with the kit of parts we gave them to compete in something that would fit the format of a high school sporting season. Very short, very intense, mm -hmm. six weeks mm -hmm. of build. And then we said, when you're all finished building your robots, they're going to come and compete in a double elimination tournament, a two-day tournament, bring the cheerleaders, bring the school bands. We've got to get the time and attention of these kids because science and technology isn't competing with science fairs. It's the 21st century. We're competing with the Super Bowl for the hearts and minds of these kids. Here's a very, very quick, and then we'll go back and I hope talk about details, but a quick synopsis. So 1992, we give out 23 kids, mm -hmm. companies from all over the country, including a few from here in Michigan, yes. like General Motors. Yes. We start this competition. We had teams come from Seattle, like Boeing, from Texas, like Texas Instruments. They all descended on one high school gym in Manchester, New Hampshire, six weeks after we gave them that first set of kits, and we had a tournament. And it was a love fest of technology. And these mentors working with all these kids had a great time. But everybody in the world that knew what first was, that experiment was in that one room at one time for that one, end, one event at the end of that season. Now, with all the growth we've had in 17 years, this year, literally today here in Lansing, in our 17th year, here's the data. We don't have 23 teams. We have over 16,000 schools. Right. We have schools competing from 42 countries. Mm -hmm. We don't have one event in a high school gym at the end of one build season of six weeks, but at the end of the six weeks, we start March Madness, where 43 cities have regionals. Every weekend in March, including this one, yeah. there are eight, nine, or 10 cities around the country, little cities like New York, Detroit, Chicago, <laughs> Los Angeles, San Jose, Cleveland, Seattle, Houston. Oh, wow. All over the country, major events are happening. We have 84,000 scientists and engineers volunteering to work with kids. 38% of the kids on these teams are women and minorities. And the data that we have collected over that 17 years, some of it funded by third parties, very credible third parties like the Ford Foundation, <laughs> yes. who paid Brandeis University to do a four-year longitudinal study of the impact of FIRST, came back and said, if a set of kids from any school, an inner city school, a suburban school, a rural school, they would do peer equivalent comparisons of these kids over four years, and they found over large numbers of kids, 